great music. And I just wanted to take a moment to, you know, thank um, numerous people. And I know I'll probably leave somebody out because there are so many to thank. I first wanted to um, thank, how do you like the decorations this year? Just when you think that Karen and Tari have outdone themselves, they do it even more. Um, are Karen, uh, Karen and Tari Jenkins, are they here? Where are you? Please stand. Tari's mad at me right now, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. There she is. You know, after uh, alumni last year, I was one of the senior class sponsors, so we got her to do that. And the junior class last year approached her and said, you're going to do graduation. So they are our go-to team to do a wonderful job. You just say, do it. So thank you very much. It looks really wonderful, and we, we appreciate that very, very, very much. What do you think of the campus? How does it look? Is Bobby Lindsay and Willie Tiku here? Bobby? Where's Willie? Probably practicing. Well, I tell you, there are two guys that are part, they're part-time. They're part-time. And when I say part-time, that may be in their pay, but that has nothing to do with their hours. I know that Bobby was on one project and Willie got on the lawnmower Thursday morning and mowed this whole campus in one day. So thank you for it looking so beautiful. That's the outside, but in addition to the inside, where is, where is Lavetta? Where are you, Lavetta? I'm blind. Are you in here yet? There's Lavetta. She just walked in. Lavetta, wave your hand. Lavetta, this campus is beautiful everywhere because she's in charge of the work crew, but I told her yesterday if we put a stepper on her, it would blow up. Thank you, Lavetta, for all of that. She's in charge of our work crews, but she does a great job keeping everything clean and, and just keeping everyone going, and we appreciate that. <clears throat> just a few announcements, and, and on the thank you, too, is thank you, Pastor Alvin. He got in here and got, well, among the many things he has done, he got our, our system set up, and then Jerry's running it, and he's also playing the piano for us today. So thank you, Pastor Alvin. And thank you, Jerry, for always being willing to help us, not just, not just only with that, but how many of you um, enjoyed the fire under the octagon last night? Did you know that there was, there was no, no set pattern for that? It was built strictly out of the vision and by hand by Pastor Alden Ho. And we were, we were grateful that he, and they'll tell you more about it later, about how the blessing came about for the, the supplies for that. But he, he put it right where we have the nice shade and it's, it's beautiful. The students have really enjoyed the nice swing. So we, we appreciate that amongst many things. As you will, um, you will look at your program. I just want to run, run over the announcements. I know you can read them for yourselves. And we're so thrilled that we're having to get out extra chairs. So if you sit towards the front, you get the better, cleaner chairs. You see that um, our afternoon, after our potluck, and as you know, we try to serve out under the pines, but there's a possibility we may have to start serving in here. But anybody, we would appreciate anybody helping to get things set up. I don't have one particular person in charge of that, but at two o'clock, we, we want to have our alumni meeting in the cafeteria. And one thing we're gonna be treated with is homemade ice cream. wonderful to see all the seats filled up. And last night, how many of you were here last night? Raise your hands. Look around. If you weren't here, you missed a wonderful program last evening and the introduction of our seniors. And we invite you to come early next year. Um, uh, we are live streaming these, these meetings. So Jerry has taken what we had at the church and brought it here today. So it is a luxury that 
If um, you want to go back and check something out, you have that opportunity to go do that. If you want to know more about the details of looking that up, you might touch base with Jerry. I do not know those details at the moment. I wanted to just start by telling you uh, I am Lynn Ho. I'm the principal here at the school, and I've been here now for four years. It has been a blessing. Um, I love the work that God has put here for us, and I especially love that every day I get to see God's hand in the work that's happening. Um, he brings together a team, my team, I'm so thankful for, um, of people with just the right skills, the right talents, the right hobbies, and they have just what we need to fill in the gaps. And so as those puzzle pieces come together, and I tend to worry or worried a lot more my first couple years, a lot less now, I see that God energy getting upset about it. And I'm telling him right now to calm me down as I speak with you. <laughs> um, and he's doing that too. Uh, most importantly, what I see in the people that he brings here is people with a heart for him, number one, and a heart for the students, number two, and the mission that this school stands for. So I thank you, all of my staff, for your commitment to this school and your commitment to God. Last year I spoke with you about many wonderful things, but I want to go back and touch base with something I told you we were going to do, and that's our agriculture program. And over the summer, we're going to do a community-supported uh, agriculture program where we would um, take organic produce, make it available to the community. And it was a pilot program over the summer, and it was successful. We produced over 100 baskets of organic fruit, I mean vegetables, it was vegetables, uh, for this community. And the thing that we, we saw was that um, and to God's mission here. We also were able to help people in the community that maybe didn't have the, the funds for doing it. So we said, come down, work in our garden. We'll trade your work for the produce. And um, it was wonderful to see how that rolled out. We'll be doing that again this summer. Um, currently, we're in the midst of revamping our greenhouse. So if you go down there, you're gonna see it, but realize it's in progress. This summer, our plan is to bring two more, one or two more greenhouses up and start a program in there that part is still developing, but I ask for your prayers as we move forward. Um, so far, we have had our students working in our agriculture program. This coming year, we're going to have an agriculture class. And the there's a lot of difference in it, and we wanted to make sure that we were bringing these additional aspects to our students. And when they come and they work, it's like, go through this row, weed this row. But when we do it class, we say, this is how we produce the right soil. This is when and the timing for when we put the seeds in. How do we make sure it's organic? All of those details, while they get them here and there, we want to provide a class where we get step by step and they get to be involved in all of those processes. This year we've been able to enhance our blended learning environment. We have installed projection systems in all of the classes, and we've also installed a projector system and sound system in our cafeteria. Um, our teachers are really enjoying the technology. Many of them have used PowerPoint or different um, visual things, even the opportunity to do video clips to the whole class, and now they have the tools that they can do that right at their fingertips. Uh, I want to say 
we have so many people that come in and volunteer on our campus, but this project particularly takes someone with the right skills. And Pastor Ho was able to come in and, and do all of our classrooms. It was a lot of work and it's sure a huge blessing. So thank you, Pastor Ho. Um, campus improvements beyond our technology. Uh, we have, I don't know if you were here last night and you got to enjoy the Octagon Fire Pit. We had that going, it was a perfect night last night, just a little chill, but if you sat by the fire, you were very comfortable and were able to visit with each other. We also uh, planted seven new fruit trees in our orchard and over an addi additional 100 pine trees around campus. Uh, we had someone that donated uh, saplings to us, 700 saplings. Um, and when they came, they came in a box about this big. And they were like, we're gonna give you 700 trees. And I'm thinking, how big is that gonna be? And they gave me this box and I thought, wow. And we worked hard and got 100 trees in. We were able to give away a good portion of the rest of them that we had, and we're thankful that someone thought about us and they were, um, as they had this abundance and they shared it with us. There's two things that are a huge part of our business, especially this year. One is our missions, and the other one hit the ground running this year. By September, Taya, where are you? Was it September? We start in the middle of August, and by September, our teams were already touring. Two times a month, they were touring, and that is two times outside of other activities. For example, the Swalu Music Fest and other things. We kept these kids going, and um, there was a lot of joy and you'll have the opportunity to hear them. They're wonderful. And that takes a lot of dedication. We have 85% of our kids in a music group or multiple music groups this year. So we have our brass band, our handbells, and our choirs. Um, another large part of keeping this school going is our recruitment. And I've asked Pila uh, Telephony, who is in charge of our recruiting, to come up and kind of go over what we've been doing as we go through this program. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I think in the two years that I've been here, this is the first time I've seen alumni outnumber the students and current faculty. Um, it's a blessing. And as I look out there, I've, I've come to realize some of you that I've met around here, she went here at one time. I had no idea. So that's why it's good to have Alumni Weekend. Um, it is definitely a blessing to see all of you here and uh, recruiting this year. This is my second year. I started uh, in the summer two years ago. And uh, I'll tell you what, it was very discouraging. Uh, there was many times where I was, uh, I called different places to to go and visit or recruit as they call it. And um, I would get a no thank you. Our kids are committed elsewhere. And so, you know, I, I got discouraged, but I kept saying to myself, you know, I hired nurses for so many years, they can't be as bad. So I kept trying. And one of the things we tried this year was getting a, a, our choir. I was able to travel with the choir and I was able before they, they sang to give a, a, a history of Jefferson Christian Academy. So that worked out well. And uh, you know, the year before, I, I remember calling, I'm not gonna mention any, any state, but I, I, I remember calling and asking to go to their camp meeting. And a week before the camp meeting, uh, they left a message for me, telling me not to come. Um, which was, you know, that, that's okay, because here, folks, the, 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 the phone calls are, are coming in and they're answering me as, as I slightly change from recruiting to visiting. So I no longer tell that I'm coming to recruit, but however, I'm coming to visit them, to visit the school because my focus is keeping young people in Christian education. Amen. Um, so it has changed within the last three weeks. 
I have been able to visit eight schools. And one of them really, uh, you know, some of these bigger schools, like uh, next week I'll be going to Cleburne. I've, I've visited uh, Fort Worth. And amazingly, Fort Worth has asked for us to put and advertise on their yearbook. So that is great. As, as we continue to work towards recruiting and, and, ask, and, and talking to kids, um, I have definitely learned that I need to gear as visiting and encouraging these young people to stay in Christian education and advent of the education at that. So the last eight, eight week, uh, three weeks has been really busy. Next week, um, I'm, I'm praying to God that he will keep my appointment in, in Oklahoma. I have two visits to two schools out there. And, you know, that's one of the places that was like, mm -mm, don't come here. We're committed elsewhere. But however, God is opening up the doors and I am very happy to looking forward to next week to speaking with young people there uh, as well. And, um, you know, it's not over. One of the things that we've also started last year was um, they asked my wife and I to come to summer camp at Lake Whitney Ranch. Um, one of the, you know, one of the things that I told them, the only way that I'm going to be able to come and work for you here at, over the summer, if you let me recruit for Jefferson Christian Academy. And so they did. So, you know, we have booth up there throughout the whole five weeks. This, this year is actually six weeks. And again, they asked my wife and I to come. I'm the head of security there. My wife uh, cooks there. So for us to go again, I told them, you know, the, you know what I asked for last year. And so they said, yes, come again, and we'll allow you to recruit again. So, you know, we're going to keep going at this. We're going to keep talking to young people. We're going to keep encouraging them. And the funny thing is, it's parents. When, when we as the choir go out and, and visit these churches and sing, it's the parents that's asking us to come. But when I call the schools, no. But that's all right. Like I said, God's timing. And he's definitely opened the door this year, and I'm praying for more time next year to be able to go out and visit with, uh, with, with the schools and to be able, once again, to keep letting them know, I drive all this way for two kids, and that's all right, because if one of you come, I pray that God will lead you heaven. Um, you know, one of the things that I've been sharing, we had, for Academy Days, we had Michael Young, one of our teachers, speak. And he brought up three very important uh, reasons why they should, uh, you know, stay in with, uh, with Christian education. The first reason, teachers that really do care. Second reason that he gives out is that everything that we teach centers and points back to Jesus. Amen. And finally, the last one that he points out is we're heaven bound. God has, has blessed the school uh, tremendously over the summer, even though I'll be at summer camp. I'm still going to be booking some, um, um, some places where some of our staff can hopefully be able to go out and again reach out to young people that are out there. And you know, Thursday, uh, myself and three other kids, and that's how we've been doing it too. We've been taking kids with us on our recruiting because I'm come, I've come to learn that when you take kids with you, other kids listen to those kids. So it's not just me standing up there and bye, 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 bye. they don't hear anything. When they sit and listen to other kids, it works out. Um, so thank you for, for all your support. I will be in, that, in, our, in our Jefferson Christian Academy booth. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to come and talk to me. And, uh, you know, one of the things that breaks my heart is going out to these schools and talking with young people. And when you speak to them about wanting to come to Jefferson Christian Academy, it's sad that they tell me, you know, I wish I can come but my parents aren't able to afford it. So please, we're really pushing and emphasizing, you know, it's a sad thing to know that there's kids that want to come here, but because of finances, they're not able to. But I tell them at the end of every meeting is, generally pray, God will see. That you, if it's meant for you to be there, then you'll be there. And I, and I And like I said, changing from recruiting to just visiting has gone a long ways, and I appreciate that. Thank you for all your support. If you have any more questions, I'll be in the booth. Please come and talk to me. If you want to sponsor one of these young people that I already know that want to come here, please let me know, and uh, I can contact them and tell them, hey, I got good news to you. You're coming to Jefferson Christian Academy. Thank you.
morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Glad to see everyone here. Well, all this visiting and recruiting, we hope, brings uh, alumni. And from looking at the uh, audience, we've got a lot of you showed up here. Uh, one of the things that I was talking to uh, one of the honor classes, and uh, I'm like, uh, wh why aren't you up here uh, helping us out? I said, you're an alumni, and they said, we weren't asked. I'm like, um, well, as alumni president, I'm making an official request, invitation, uh, begging <laughs> for any of the honor classes, especially the honor classes, to uh, be involved, participate in your year. Uh, we like to hear from you. Uh, we like to know what's been going on. We like to know what God has done for you in your life. And uh, we just, there's, there's no uh, a personal invitation individually. We're, having, we're giving an open invitation to any alumni or anyone that has gone to school to be involved. And uh, we, it would just, uh, it'd be nicer for everyone to, uh, to hear from everyone else since, instead of seeing the same faces all the time. <clears throat> and another thing that uh, was uh, brought to my attention was, uh, well, I didn't know what it was on alumni. It's always the third weekend in April. And I'm not exactly sure how the Easter thing works out. Sometimes it's uh, Easter Falls on alumni, which is a plus for visiting here in the colony and it may be negative for other situations, but uh, alumni is always the third weekend in April. And uh, one thing about uh, nowadays, uh, you're being recorded. If you're up front, uh, you may be on Facebook uh, within a few hours. So what I'm saying is I'm probably being recorded, and so that's another way that the invitation stands. Thank you very much. Um, I was wanting to uh, mention our, uh, our mission trip. Uh, we had a uh, combination mission trip, mission trip, choir trip, and uh, due to connections and a lot of hard work, the students were able to raise enough funds to go on a mission trip to Hawaii. And that turned out really well. We've done a lot of uh, uh, visiting with uh, the schools and uh, uh, various uh, locations, and we got a really positive response to that. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Alumni. Um, we are here to recognize the people that are on our years this year. And although we don't have 58 up here, I would like to find out if there is anyone here from the class of 1958. If you are here from 1958, please stand up. No? Okay, um, what about class of 1968? Who all, please stand up for 1968. Welcome, congratulations on 1968. your big year. The class of 78 will be here, graduated 40 years ago, if you can believe that. Is anybody here from the class of 78? Stand up, please. Nobody? Okay, I am from the class of 88, and I would like to see who else is here representing our class this year for our 30th year reunion. Kevin? Is there anyone else here from the class of 1988? Okay. For their 25th 
class reunion, the class of 1993. Please stand. I know there's several that have come from 1993. Maybe they're all outside, but I know there's a bunch here. <laughs> Okay, the class of 1998. Yay, good to see you all. <laughs> and the class of 2008 for their 10th year. Can you stand? Let's all be on time. All right. Okay, next we have a couple of presentations to make. Open these boxes. Maybe. We would like to present a plaque in recognition of service and dedication to the Academy for the Honored Team Award to Bob and Susie Powell. Can you please come up? Bob or Susie. <laughs> I want to tell you, um, these two work behind the scenes a lot. Um, I'll tell you one thing that I really appreciated that they did. When I first came back here, the first thing I noticed was the flags in the parking lot that were all torn up. <laughs> This year, um, Susie worked at, um, after she sent Jared home to make his will and testament for his family, she put him up on the uh, ladder here with another ladder and he painted those flag poles. And then they uh, got the flags, bigger flags than we had before, and I just love that. And they, they do so much, you know, to help, but it's all behind the scenes. But I really appreciate those flags. <laughs> Our second award is for recognition of service and dedication of the Academy for an Honored Alumnus Award. And she's not here today, but this is Taneda Hancock. If anyone knows her, she's receiving this award for all of the services she's given to the Academy. Thank you. The Alumni Association um, give scholarships to the kids. Uh, we ask them to fill out some paperwork and to apply and get some references. Uh, sometimes we have a hard time getting kids to do that. It's not that hard. I'm hoping that next year we get more kids <laughs> that will do that. Um, this year we have one that is going to receive this scholarship and that's Katie Downs. If you can come up here. <laughs> Katie's getting a $250 scholarship, and I'm just really happy that she is getting this. Katie's my worker. She works with me in the business office, and uh, she's done a really good job for me, and I really want to see her come back next year. <laughs> Places, dozens of places in the Bible that God is instructing us to reach out and help and take care of those that are less fortunate and help the widows and uh, children. There's uh, one text in particular, uh, Job 31:16, and Job was uh, one of God's spokesmen and he was one of the ones that God put out there to say, hey, this is the way you want to be. You want to be like Job. 
And Job said, I have never denied the wishes of the poor, nor let the widows live in despair. So that's something that we need to keep in mind, that God is always urging us to reach out and help those that are less fortunate. In the uh, first of the year, uh, Jefferson Christian Academy usually has a uh, uh, worthy student program, a, a, a donation program where there's people that constantly give to, to the school. And it usually allows us to have a 10, 20 percent worthy student capability. Well, this year, when uh, we sat down in our first board meeting, uh, we had uh, over 40 percent that were asking to come to school and needed some help. And, uh, and we go through all the procedures to, for the qualifications. And we kind of stepped out on faith that uh, God would provide. This is God's school. It's been here for over 100 years. And we really suffer when it's said when we have to turn someone, someone away because of finances or funds or or even sometimes going through the year, everything's fine with the family, and then all of a sudden, uh, one of the uh, providers in the family ends up in the hospital or loses their job. And we have to try to reach deep and, and uh, keep them here. <clears throat> so what we're doing is asking you to help us when we stepped out in faith with the Worthy Student Program. And and help us to be able to constantly encourage people, even if they're struggling financially, to get a Christian education, because that's what God instructs us to do. Now we'll have our offering. I'm sorry. Uh, did everybody receive one of these sheets of paper with a project on it? All right, Carrie. <laughs> Um, well, last night we handed these out, and there's a group that's gotten together, so you can see that project. But someone approached me last night, <clears throat> I hope I word this correctly, and said, Brenda, I want to anonymous, anonymously challenge the people today that for one of these projects, say the number one one that's going to cost $1,100 Eighty-eight dollars. If someone will give that, I will match that. If someone will give the five hundred dollars, they'll match that. They'll do one of these matching gifts. So if somebody has the five hundred, they'll match the five hundred. If someone will do the four ninety, they'll match that. But if you are interested in doing that, you know we've got tithe envelopes back there. We've got Jefferson Academy envelopes. We've got Tari right here. Tari is our business manager, but you can write on there for the alumni and just put project matching. And we appreciate the person that offered to do that. Now, am I correct? If, if, if the loose offering goes to the, uh, for yeah. the alumni association right. and scholarships, etc. That's true. But if, if you want it strictly to go to where the student or for a particular project, mm -hmm. you need to mark it on your envelope. Right. Anything loose, alumni association for... Uh, the alumni program, the uh, scholarships, and different things there, and end up helping on other programs. But if you want it to go specifically, you need to mark it on the envelope. Everybody will see in their chair, there's a card. And that is a card that you can mark. It's self-explanatory. And again, he lives back there. Do you see any of us that are here, we're, we're more than welcome to to um, help you. And I wanted to mention one last thing I forgot. I pre we appreciate all the alumni officers, but there's one that is missing for the first time in many years, and that's Yvonne Blewett. She and Larry's granddaughter was getting married today, so we, we miss her. But just want to keep that in mind. If you have any questions about it, come talk to me about it, about this matching, but that was what I appreciate. And this is for the boys' dorm, and how many of you went to the dorm, stayed in the dorms here? Boys or girls? Okay. You remember what it was like when you went here? You know what you would like for it to look like when you went here? Just keep that in mind.
Carl was just saying, well, he uh, thought maybe uh, we should just combine the pastoral prayer with the offering prayer. So that's what we're going to do. And um, at this point, I would invite you, you know, folks, we need to be inviting the Holy Spirit to be with us, do we not? Yes, because we need the Spirit of God. And so I want to invite you to kneel with me if you're able. Uh, if you're not, just reverently stay there in your chair. But if you're able to kneel with me and we're going to pray, pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to bless us and to bless us all. Father, we come this morning recognizing that it is our privilege to come boldly before the throne of grace, to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. And Father, this school is here as a miracle of your grace. We recognize that it is only by your grace alone that we are here day by day. And so, Father, we call upon you this morning. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be present. We ask that your Holy Spirit would touch each of our hearts and draw us to the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask, Father, that your Spirit would walk these grounds and that you would help us as a people to live for you. You would help us as a people to recognize our dependence upon you. You would help us as a people to respond with affection and love for you. Father, we ask that you would bless this offering that we just took. We ask, Lord, that you would touch each of our hearts and that you would help us each to do our part. We pray that you would bless Brother uh, Kenny Mitchell as he shares the message with us this morning. We ask that you would speak through his lips and that, again, you would touch our hearts to draw us to Jesus. Thank you, Father, for helping us today so that Jesus is important to us. Jesus is centered to us. That Jesus is our righteousness. He is our wisdom. He is our sanctification. This we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen.
I am reading from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Yeah, I promise this is the last time you will see me. It was my pleasure to make a, try to make a brief introduction of our speaker. I, I know many of you know, I know it's Pastor Ken Midget, but you're still Kenny to me. I'm sorry, Kenny to me. But we welcome him. 
I was, I must admit, Kenny is about a year younger than me. <clears throat> when he arrived yesterday, got out of the car, and he had a cane. So I, I, I admittedly went, yes, somebody besides me has bad knees. I said, Kenny, do you have to have a knee replacement? He says, no, I fell on the ice and hurt my hip. And I went, oh. I just knew I was going to be able to say that somebody younger than me was on a cane. Anyway, but we are so happy he is here. I always have fun. Uh, I haven't, had not seen Kenny and Tammy in almost 10 years. And I was at GYC a little over a year ago and I was running through the hotel and I heard somebody go, Brenda Heiser. And I went, what? <laughs> and it was them. And so it's always fun to catch up. And, and I think I said this last time, I, uh, you know, when we get together, especially Tammy and I, because Tammy and I were close. Kenny and I knew him through playing basketball. You know, he had his temper. I had mine. I mean, temperament. He had his. He had mine. Uh, but Tammy was my neighbor, and we went to work together. And so we kind of make our little little jokes about I was the one that drove around. Sometimes she drove around. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. And Kenny is... You're the youth director, youth director of the Michigan Conference, and I just think it's kind of fun because when Alden and Lynn first moved here, and we said something about Kenny Mitchell, and they're going, "Yeah, he's in Michigan. We, uh, he started here." And then Michael Young asked me, "Do you know Kenny Mitchell?" And I went, uh, "Yeah." So everything they have done or become, they started here, and we are so happy to have you, Pastor Ken Mitchell, bring us our message today. And one thing before we go into this message this morning, I just want to encourage all of you that are standing up in the back. We've still got empty chairs up here, and we've got some over here on this side. And uh, we just appreciate you just come and make yourself at home. Amen. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord today, where two or three are gathered, there's God in the midst of us. If you're glad of that, I want you to stand up where you are. Stand up. Turn around and give somebody a high five or a holy hug. Some of you now can move to the front. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I was trying to remember when I first came to uh, Jefferson Academy as a student. I think it was in 1977 or 78. I, was, I think I was parts of 77 and then parts of 78. You see, I at first attended Valley Grande Academy. And they thought it would be a good idea if I'd go somewhere else and spread the gospel. And so, anyway, uh, hey, I landed here at Jefferson Academy. I have to tell you... Students, that things were different, um, maybe. I know one of you said that your generation didn't like to work. You know, we didn't like to work either. And I, it isn't your generation. That I think is what's different, though, is your parents don't make you work. Your parents are helicopter parents. They hover over you, you know, and won't let you do anything. Our parents insisted that we work. Get a job. You're not sitting at home. Get, get to work. My dad, I remember asking if I could borrow some money from him. He said, I, I wanted to buy a, a motorcycle. And I said, Dad, it's a good deal. I said, can I borrow some money because I will pay it back. He said, yeah, you can, you can get some money from me. I think you can earn it. I think you can work for it. But it's on sale now. Can you give me the money now? And I'll get it. And then I'll work for it. I promise. That's not how it's done, son. No. You, you don't borrow. You work for it. I'll give you the money. And then if you still want it, you buy it. But it might not be there. Yeah, that's another lesson you're going to have to learn. It might not be there. So you might should have saved your money. You know, you guys, I, I, I think... Young people, I'm going to tell you today something. I work with quite a few hundred. 
young people. Over the years, I've had thousands of young people that I've interacted with. Don't allow your parents to do it to you. I have parents that will call me asking if I can hire their kid. And I'd say, sorry, I only hire adults. But they're 18 and they need some help. Yeah, leave them alone. Let them realize that they need to work. They need to go and, and, and communicate. I don't like talking to parents. I'm not hiring them. I'll talk to them about the weather. I'll talk to them about all kinds of things. You guys, Jesus is coming again. And he is preparing a people. A people that love him because of what he has done for them. They're in love with the fact that God sent his son, his only son, to this world to pay the price. To die for their sins and they're in love with that fact. I have to tell you, young people, when I was your age, I wasn't a Christian. When I came here to Jefferson Adventist Academy, I did not want to be a Christian. Why do you think Valley Grandy Academy asked me to go someplace else? And I realized that when I came to this school, I remember going to the boys' dorm. Number 12 was my room in the boys' dorm. I went in that room. Bill Bouchard was my, my, my roommate. And I remember the guys in the hall. And I know who my boy's dean was. I'd sit in the, uh, in the class of Jack Heiser. And I watched as this beautiful, blonde woman, girl. I thought she was amazing. She walked right by me. Did I like what I saw? That was eye candy. I mean, to tell you. And as she walked by me, I thought she was stuck up. She wouldn't give me the time of day. She wouldn't look at me. She once told me that I was too short and she could never marry someone shorter than her. Well, we got several awards. We started dating. Her name's Tammy. She's right there. Tammy, stand up where you are. She's from the class of 80. She graduated here. And we got several awards. One was in the ad building. They gave us this social award, they called it. It was really neat. Yeah, it was great. We got another award in the back of the gym right here one day. You know? Uh, you know, I, I could teach you a lot of things. I can tell you a lot of things that I remember about this school. Some of them I don't want to tell you and I don't want to remember because I wasn't a Christian. And it dawned on me, you guys, that our schools, our churches are not designed to make people holy. Our churches and our schools are not designed to make people perfect. Our churches and our schools are here for one purpose. To reveal the character of Jesus Christ. Because I tell you something. Dub Pal, I worked for him. I was talking to Bob, Bob's dad. I worked for him. I remember I had my own car when I was here and um, Dub had a job of tearing down some building and he was going to, I don't know, do some steel work. And Dub, he, he wasn't exactly a follower and I wasn't either. And so I was in good company. I asked him for a cigarette and he said, yeah, I'll give you a cigarette. And then he told me on me. <laughs> he come back to the school and told the dean about me smoking. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know? And, and, and the dean, you guys, he didn't tell the principal. He didn't tell the ad building, uh, the committee. Maybe he did. But he woke up early in the morning and he said, you still want to be in my dorm? And I said, yeah, I do. I, you know, do you want some help with that? And I said, yeah, I didn't mean it. I just didn't want to go face my mom and dad again. 
And he said, all right. So he woke up in the morning, and he got me out of bed, and we went exercising. And he did a five-day smoking plan with me. I never wanted to quit smoking, and I didn't quit smoking. But to this day, if you say anything bad about my dean, I'll figure out a way to use this. <laughs> you say anything bad about my principal. You say anything bad about the people in this church. Because I came back to this community. And the people in this community, they found a way to love me. In spite of what I looked like. In spite of what I, how I acted. I came to this church, this Jefferson Academy church, and people started loving me. Because there was no way you were going to make me holy. When I was in high school, you could put my body in church, but my mind was not there. There are a lot of people today that are in church. But their minds are not there. A lot of people want to go to heaven. Because they don't want to go to hell. And it will never be good enough. It will never change who you are. It will never help you to connect with Jesus Christ. And be on the frequency that he's on. And I want to tell you about that this morning. Would you bow with your heads with me in prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we worship you because of your love for us, and that's it. We are nothing. We're a mess. We're sinners. We fall short of your glory and grace. We get up and we try and we try like Martin Luther. We beat ourselves up. Sometimes we'll be in confessional six hours at a time. Like Martin Luther. We realize that Lord, even after that time of confessing every single sin, we tend to do it again over and over again. And it's only... It's only your grace that reveals to us that we need a new nature. We need a new start, a clean heart and a right spirit. And so, Father, would you do what you need to do in our lives today because of your love, because of your promises. For we ask you that you would just use me today as an instrument and we could hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation, the sixth chapter. It's amazing, you guys, when you think about this story. In Revelation chapter, um, I'm sorry, I said six, but I meant the 14th chapter, verse six. The three angels' messages are to be proclaimed just before Jesus comes. That first angel's message includes the time when Jesus is investigating in the most holy place the condition of every human heart and mind. We call it the investigative judgment. In this verse, God, we see, is with mercy extending his hand and arms and feet to every one of humanity. In mercy. If we close at the end of the three angels message. We see God without mercy. We see the executive phase of God's judgment. We see the time when the people that are just will be just still. The people that are unjust will be unjust still. And God's mercy has been withdrawn. His message of mercy has been given. It's now over. And so I want to explore something that's going to change your life. 
It's going to be vital. It's going to be what's the most important thing that we could ever focus on in these messages while mercy is going on. Because I could say all kinds of things about end times events. And what's happening around the world. And we could talk about end time events. And some of you could actually be scared straight. But it wouldn't be for long. It wouldn't last. Because the most important thing that I can share for you today. Is that look at yourself. And don't look around. Don't compare you with anyone else. Don't look at what you're wearing or what anyone else is wearing. Look at the inside of your mind. Be present today because Jesus honestly loves you just like you are. He loves you with an everlasting love. My wife and I got married on February the 2nd, 1980. Some of you guys, if you'll come up in the back of this, not now, you'll see. I got up on a ladder once and I wrote, Kenny and Tammy forever. Wow. It's still there. God is passionate about you and me. He's passionate about us. And in John chapter 3, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, a Pharisee. He was a leader of the church. Guys, don't look to the leaders of their church. Look to Jesus. And as this Pharisee who had thought in his mind he was... He was holy. He thought in his mind, surely he would have eternal life. That wasn't even a question. And yet in Jesus, in the simple garb of a peasant, they were expecting somebody that wore the clothes, that talked the talk, that had the power and influence with the church, that the church could endorse. But Jesus couldn't endorse be endorsed by the church. They weren't about to do that. And yet, and Nicodemus saw something in Jesus that was missing in him. So he went to Jesus by night. And Jesus realized right away that Nicodemus and his self-sufficiency was on a frequency that was headed with death. It was the nature, it was the very thing that he was born with. That he was on that frequency and it was headed to death. And Jesus, he is on a frequency that takes us to eternal life. Someone say amen. Amen. And so he said to Nicodemus, hey, you need to be born again. Nicodemus on that different frequency says, how can I jump into my mother's womb the second time? And Jesus is like, you're a leader in Israel and you don't get it. Jesus, in his kindness, he tells Nicodemus that that which is born of of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spiritual. And you need to be born of the spirit. You need to have the cleansing power of the water experience of God in your life. And you need me to change you because I found out. That as a young person, I knew how to manipulate the faculty. I knew how to say, I'm sorry. I learned it by being the youngest in a baby of five. I watched my siblings get in trouble. I remember my brother, you know, he was like, whoa, you know, dad, I'm sorry when he got trouble. My brother was like, yeah, my dad said, did you do this? Yeah, I did it. I did it. Do Do you deserve this spanking? Yeah, Dad, I I deserve it. I I deserve it. And Dad would always pray with us before and after. And I was like, wait a minute, Dad. Let's talk. I don't want to. No, this isn't fair. There was something. I was motivated differently. No, I don't want this punishment. I don't want this whipping. I remember looking in my dad's eyes as a little kid one day. And I looked up and I said, Dad, is this what Jesus would do?
my dad, <laughs> he left the room. Same way he left the room when I asked him about sex. He's just, uh, talk to your mother. <laughs> you know, you guys, we have this nature. And it's what God is telling us in the first message of Revelation 14, verse 6. Is that he sees in our lives as if there was no darkness. In the darkness, we think we do. Things behind closed doors, no one sees, no one knows what we think. It is light. Is it is light to God. It is clear to God. He sees it all. And he loves us. And he cares for us. And he knows that he can help us. And he tells Nicodemus, he says, listen, do you remember the story in Egypt when all of the snakes were biting the people and they were dying? Well, they were dying. And so is what I did is I, God told you to put a cross with a serpent on it, a bronze serpent. And if you would look, you would live the Messiah when he comes. He will become sin. He will take the nature that was given to us. That's why the serpent. And if you'll look, you'll live. And he was helping Nicodemus see what his mission was. Because Nicodemus was on the wrong frequency. You guys, when you read the Bible, when you read the story of, of, of the prophets, when you read Revelation and Daniel, if you're on the wrong frequency, if you're not born of the Spirit, you're going to come up with all kinds of crazy um, conclusions. It's what we need to do is we need to be asking ourselves every morning, Jesus, would you teach me to fall in love with you? Jesus, would you teach me how to talk to you? Jesus, would you teach me how to read your word and would you give me a love for it? Because be honest with God, right now, I don't have a love for God, you can say. I went to a camping conference not long ago, not by a Christian denomination, American Camping Association. We're a member of that in our camp, Asabo. And I went to this meeting and here was a secular psychologist. And you know what they were saying? Oh, wow, the attention spans of our young people in this world. It's not just young, it's everyone. Everybody's looking down at their screen. Everybody's looking at everything and they're not even connecting with people. They're not talking to one another. Really, they're present, but they're not present. And you know what the, her plea was? Oh, I wish that we had television back in our home. I wish we had television back in our home. And she said, well, at least the kids were in the same room. At least the family was together. At least we, we could turn off the TV and be in one place. At least we could eat together in the living room. But now families are torn apart. People that give their kids an iPhone, they... They lose much of their influence. And now they're being influenced by anything that's out there. Guys, Jesus is coming very soon and the devil knows it. He knows that his time is short and he doesn't want you to find Jesus as your best friend. He doesn't want you to know him. He doesn't want you to have a relationship with Jesus. He wants you. He wants you to have a form of godliness. That's okay with Satan. It's even better if you go to church. He'd love it to see you in church. You can do way more damage in church if you just have a form of godliness. Because people that have a form of godliness deny the power of God. And so the first angel's message is this. I saw another angel, verse 6, Revelation 14, flying in the midst of heaven. 
from the very throne of God comes this message, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and the earth and the sea and the springs of water. And as you are Hearing this message today, you're being asked, will you fear God? Not as someone to run from, not that kind of fear, but someone to run to. A God that when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, said, when you address God, say, hallowed it be thy name. If you understand your relationship as created and his relationship as creator, he's not our buddy. He's not our pal. He's not our equal. He is king of kings and lord of lords. And at Every knee, one day, every knee is going to bow. But not every knee is going to be saved. If you continue on with the warnings, the warning is to come out of Babylon, come out of confusion. Don't call yourself a Christian and deny God. Today, instead of a love for our Bibles, we're glued to some form of entertainment. And it's not my purpose today to point out the faults. Because young people, you may be bad, badgered on and said, oh, the youth of today, the youth of today, the, the truth is, it's my age of today that are messed up. Your age, yes, we're all messed up. We all fall short of the glory of God. But yet, we mask it way better than you do. We learn how to dress. We learn how to talk. We are very diplomatic in our converse with others. And so we can put on masks. You go to any given church, whether it's Adventist, Baptist, Pentecostal, it doesn't matter. Across America... And you will find groups of people gathering that don't love each other. You'll find groups of people professing their belief in the fact of God. But not allowing that God to have control of their life to where their acts are of God. In any given church you go to, people, they... It's, it's all they can do to spend an hour, an hour and a half together, and it's like, see you next week. I'm encouraging you. Whatever is distracting you from a relationship with Jesus Christ, ask yourself, is that more important? The 70 years that you have than the eternal life that God offers. And when Nicodemus saw Jesus on the cross, it clicked. He, he came forward with Joseph of Arimathea and he said, Hey man, I've got money. I'm going to buy the spices. Oh, why didn't I see this? Jesus was trying to tell me that he was the savior of the world. I had an audience with God and I didn't know it. The Bible says in Jeremiah that there is a group of people that weep and lament because they say this. The summer is over, the harvest is past, and we are not saved. We are not saved. As much as I love Tammy, we're not saved because we're a couple. We can't be saved as family. We can't be saved as just church members or people that went to Jefferson Adventist Academy. We're only saved because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus told him, Nicodemus, and he got it 
Finally, when he was look, lifted up, it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you miss righteousness by faith out of the third angel's message, you will be an Adventist that is good at convincing people about the Sabbath truth. About the state of the dead truth. About the doctrinal truths that we have. Like Nicodemus. You can look pretty good out there. You have the facts. But if you miss the whole point of the three angels message. It's that God wants to give you the righteousness of his son. And by faith we can receive it. We can accept the life that Jesus lived. And that's the only way we can give God glory. Amen. You are never giving him glory today just by your presence. Just because, students, you go to a Christian school doesn't make you a Christian. Just because you go to a Seventh-day Adventist church does not make you an Adventist. So guys, I was challenged the other day at a ministerial meeting. Do we teach to the test? Are we teaching to the test? You know what a teacher does when they're insecure and they see that, hey, I need all my students to pass. It looks better out there. So they will teach you all the information that's going to be on the test. And then you'll get the test, high test scores. And therefore, wow, I've done a good job. I've got this class. They, they've made a high percentage of passing. I've got a, I've got a 90% pass rate in my class. Are we as Seventh-day Adventist members teaching to the test? Okay, if you learn these 28 fundamental beliefs, you can now say your baptismal vows and be baptized and you're a good Seventh-day Adventist. Baloney. We get people and we... We, we teach them doctrinal truths. We baptize them. And then we say, we had 600 baptisms in our conference this year. Oh, yeah, I know. And a lot more people were born. I know a lot more. Yeah, I know that's not very much for the population. But, guys, I want to read you something. I want to read you something that I thought was just really amazing. And I, you know, I'm sorry, Brenda, if I'm going over time, but you know, you flew me here and I'm not going <laughs> to, hey, it is what it is, right? But I, I was reading in Christ Object Lessons something that was so amazing. It says here in verse, or in page 120. Then the glad tidings of a risen Savior were carried to the uttermost bounds of the inhabited world. The church beheld converts flocking to her from all directions. This was right the book of Acts. Believers were converted, sinners united with Christians in seeking the pearl of great price. The prophecy was fulfilled. The weak shall be as David in the house of David, as the angel of the Lord, as Zechariah 12, 8 says. Every Christian saw in his brother the divine similitude of the benevolence and love. Wow. That means that when I'm at the gas station, the people that I'm pulling up side by side, that means who, the person that cuts me off in traffic, the person that irritates me, the person that gets under my skin, I see in them value, like Christ value. One interest prevailed. One interest prevailed. 
One object swallowed up all others. All hearts beat in harmony. The only ambition of the believers was to reveal the likeness of Christ's character and to labor for the enlargement of his kingdom. That was their only ambition. I just want everybody to see Jesus. I want them to know about Jesus. And although I wasn't a Christian, when I was here at Jefferson Academy, I saw Jesus and my dean. I saw his acts of kindness in the church members. And that's why it says, whosoever believeth in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah, but God, I've got to teach them to be vegetarians. Yeah, but God, I've got to teach them the Sabbath. Yeah, I've, God, I've got to teach them the state of the dead. Yeah, God, I've got to teach them this and that. God, if they aren't like me, I've got to teach people to sin like I sin, Lord. Because if they don't sin like I sin, then they're not going to be going to heaven. Do you see what now was the problem with the talent that was buried? Do you see now that the guy that buried the talent in the parable of Jesus... He dug it up and he said, here, I knew what kind of person you were here. Here, it's yours. And why God was upset with him? Because when God gives you the smallest of talents, the littlest of seeds, it has the potential and the power to, to grow into something amazing, to be fantastic in the eyes of God. It has the potential to grow in the beauty and the power of God and to multiply. How many of us honestly believe that if I believe in Jesus, that he will lead me into all truth? And it's, you're not, it's not our responsibility to make people holy. It's our responsibility to bring people to Jesus Christ. And some people are going to get this. And it's going to take a hold of this church. The, the righteousness of Christ message is going to take a hold of this church. And the work is going to be finished rapidly. Amen. And I read something that went to that effect. It was just amazing because when I flew in to Dallas... And I got a car and drove here and I was looking at all the people and I said, Lord, how are all these people going to know? How are you going to come soon with all of these people? How is this going to happen? What is the Holy Spirit being falling out on us going to look like? And in a letter of sermons and talks in a volume one, page 306. It says the Lord can do more in one hour than we can do in a whole lifetime. And when he sees that his people are fully consecrated, let me tell you a great work will be in a short time. And the message of truth will be carried into the dark places of the earth where it has never been proclaimed. Brothers and sisters, I believe the Spirit of God is, is being poured out on this world today. And I believe that the Laodicean church that does not receive the Laodicean message will never, ever be a part of that experience. They will have a form of godliness, but they will deny its power. And the Bible says, from such turn away. But the Holy Spirit first, before it can do good in your and my life, we must receive the Holy Spirit in its early reign before we can appreciate its latter reign. Because the early reign is what prepares our heart. It gives us the new nature. It's the, it's the miracle that Nicodemus needed. It's the, it's the power of God that takes us into his arms 
and transforms us by the renewing of our minds. And as our lives are transformed, we're becoming more and more like Jesus every day. You guys, you won't have a problem with someone. You won't have a problem with, with any distractions. You'll recognize it. The Holy Spirit will point it out to you. It happens. You know, a lot of people, they go to church on Sabbath, but they don't keep Sabbath. Their conversation is about sports, it's about the ball games, it's about everything else, what they're doing in the world. And that's just an indication that they're feeding on the world all week long. God's people, we've got to put away the things that so easily beset us. And I don't know what that is in your life, as all I know is I'm asking God to show me what it is in my life. I know this, that the closer I get to Jesus Christ, the more I'm going to love you. The more I'm going to be less judgmental and critical of you. The less fault finding I'm going to be of you. The closer I get to Jesus Christ, the, real, I, the realization is, is that I want to get to know you. I want you to know Jesus. I want you to know my friend. I want you to know my Savior. I want you to know my God. That's giving glory to God. That is the righteousness of Christ dwelling in our hearts. He imparts that to us. So ladies, I'm telling you something. Here's a message. It's going to step on some of your toes. You're not going to like this. I'll just let you know right away. What would happen if you'd spend the entire week preparing your house and inviting people over to your house so that you could encourage them. And you could, show, you could show them the love of Christ, not in entertaining, not in showing them what you own. That's going to burn. But showing them that they are special. We need to be inviting people into our houses and having prayer bands and having fellowships. They won't come to the church. They've seen in churches people that don't love each other. They've seen in churches people that, that just can't get along. The world can't handle that. Why do you think people are so amazed at Islam? At least their people will put a bomb around their waist. Their belief, they believe in it so much that they will put a bomb around themselves and go blow themselves up for what they believe. But the third angel's message is this. The third angel's message is that when people fear God and give Him glory, they were gonna, they're going to put a bomb around their waist too. And they're going to do damage to the world. But here's the motive and here's the damage. Love. It's what makes the difference. If you put a bomb on your chest because you can't stand somebody. And you're going to make somebody happy because you're going to kill yourself for your cause. You'll blow yourself up and you'll injure quite a few people. But you're never going to spread the love of Jesus. Some of you think that you're putting a bomb on yourself for God, telling people how they should live their life, how they should be just like you. And it will win no one to Christ that is motivated by love. Today, we have the, the message that Jesus, in his mercy, is saying, would you please, would you please fear me in a way that you hallow my name, that you understand that I love you and I have the power and the ability to give you so that you can 
give glory to me. I can't give glory to God in the nature that I was born with. I just can't do it. I couldn't do it when I was in academy. I can't do it now. I can only give him glory if I have the nature of Jesus. And I believe with all of my heart, his words, whosoever, whosoever, that's, that's, we don't talk about nationalities. We don't talk about race. We don't talk about color. We don't talk about sizes. We don't talk about shapes. Whosoever, I don't, I, I know this, that this is telling me when I give my life to Jesus, I must forfeit the right to choose who I can love. I no longer can choose who I can love. Before Jesus, man, I tell you what, if you were nice to me, I was a fun guy to have around. If you were mean to me, I'd get you. Somehow, I'd get even with you. I'd get you. It might be a chicken on your, your Bob Bow, I'd get even with you. It might be. I'll tell you something. Is what makes the difference. It was make is what makes the difference. Is Jesus, and a new nature. Because if I have a new nature, the Bible says in Romans chapter eight verse one, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. None. Your belief in Jesus will carry you into all truth. There will be people that learn to keep their first Sabbath in heaven on their way to heaven that are saved. There are people that will learn about the state of the dead in heaven. There are people that are going to learn that like the thief on the cross, that belief in Jesus is enough. Yeah, but I've got to do this. Yeah, but I've got to do that. No, you don't. Die to self. Surrender to self. Believe in Jesus. And you will not perish. You will have eternal life. And there will be people that will be in heaven because of your Christ-like example. And your Christ-like words. So my plea to my fellow alumni and the students here at Jefferson Academy. Is are you willing to allow God to have control, to manage your life? Are you willing to say, okay, Lord, I want you to come in to my life. I want you to manage my life. Because that's what it means to believe in Jesus. That's what it means to fear God. If you say, well, Lord, I'll call you when I need you. I, I want to manage my living room. I want to manage my kitchen. I want to manage my bedroom. Come on in to the garage. No. I want to ask you, do you want? Do you want to respond to the love of God while his mercy is being Offered to you now to give up your control and say, Jesus, okay, I'm no longer my own. I was bought with a price. You are God and I'm your creation. I'm just going to give you my life. And wherever it goes from here is your business. You will be fearless. You will be fearless. You will not need to worry about death or whether or not you're going to have tomorrow or whether or not you're going to get home. You're not focused on the hereafter. You're focused on enjoying the presence. You will have then entered into the rest that Hebrews chapter 4 tells us about. If that's your desire, I'm going to ask that you stand right here where you are.
Don't do it because you want to go to heaven. Guys, that's a poor motive. Just do it if you recognize that Jesus loves you and you want to say yes to Jesus. Don't do it if you want to go to heaven, guys. Dear Father in heaven, you have seen our commitment to you right now. And we're standing saying that we value you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen, everyone. Amen. We want to give you management of our life. Amen. We want to give you control. And Lord, that is scary for us. It took us, it, 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 it took us a lot to get to this point because we were raised to trust ourselves. It's scary to us to stand. But Lord, my Bible tells me that perfect love casts out all fear. And we, surrendering to you, ask that you would fill us with the love of Christ. And that our bodies could be your mouthpieces, could be your hands and feet. To share the likeness of Jesus with the people that we come in contact with. With wherever you take us. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I think. Thank you Kenny. Just one reminder. We will be setting up the tables for potluck in the back. So if you'll give us some time to get everything set up. We appreciate it. And thank you very much. Thank you.